Well, good Tuesday morning. I just uh, wanted to take an opportunity and share just a couple quick thoughts with you. There's a, a great uh, a great passage in, in Genesis, and I'm going to wander through a few different, different chapters I've been reading uh, in Genesis and just sort of flashed back to the, the first few chapters. Uh, you know, it's interesting how how God desires to have communion uh, with us. Um, you, you find it from the very beginning, uh, even in chapter 1, after he had created them, uh, you find that God is having conversation with with them. Uh, he tells us in, 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 in chapter 1, uh, God created a man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, uh, plural, uh, so obviously he's talking to both of them, be fruitful and multiply. He gives them some commands about about what they need to do, but there's communion that's taking place between between God and man. Chapter two is a little bit of a flashback as he as he goes back and talks about about uh, uh, creating uh, Adam and putting him in the garden and <clears throat> and realizing that uh, he's incomplete without a helper. He makes Eve for him, and and uh, so uh, so now he has. Uh, flesh of his flesh and bone of his bones. And then in chapter three, you have the fall uh, into sin, but uh, but there, there's that, that great verse uh, in verse three of, uh, verse eight, excuse me, in chapter three, uh, where their eyes had been opened in verse seven, they ate of the forbidden fruit. And it says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves uh, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Uh, God calls out unto uh, unto Adam, and he said, "Where are you?" And uh, uh, Adam, of course, realizing he can't stay hidden, he said, "Well, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself." Well, well, there's communication, communion that is taking place uh, between between God and Adam, and uh, God and Eve. And uh, the reality is, uh, God created us that we might have communion. Uh, with him, all of us, uh, not not just Adam and Eve, not just some of the great patriarchs of the Old Testament, not not just the great saints like uh, like Paul and and um, uh, the disciples. Uh, God created all of us that He might have communion with us. All of us uh, are are particular and special unto God, and He longs to to have communion with us. And and the the idea, the concept uh, that the Creator of all things wants to have uh, communion with us that. Uh, boy, that that is a difficult thought to digest. But when you finally get a hold of that, uh, boy, boy, that ought to resonate with you that uh, that there's something special and specific about you. God wants to have communion with you. Uh, he's given us this wonderful vessel, this wonderful vehicle of of prayer, uh, where we can come into His presence at any time. He's given us the Word of God, where He reveals Himself unto us, and so. Uh, we can understand who he is. It gives a depiction of who we are and uh, how we relate with him, how we relate, relate with each other. It, it, it reveals God's uh, will and plan for our lives. And so so God is a God who who's not just some, some distant God who's uninvolved and unactive, inactive in the, the lives of his creation. Uh, God longs to have a, a communion and fellowship with us. And one of the ways we do that is through through the word of God and, and through prayer. And so uh, so what a glorious thought that God wants to have communion with you. Uh, but, but then you find that, that not only does he want that, but God goes to great lengths to enjoy that. Uh, even as, as early, uh, back in, in, in the early chapters of Genesis, uh, when, when Adam and Eve were here upon the earth and he planted Adam and Eve in the garden, uh, you find that, uh, that, that God came down to them. Uh, it wasn't them pursuing him. It wasn't them going to find him. God came to them. Uh, obviously, it, it appears that it was a it was a, a daily practice that the Lord would come down when they were in the garden and and uh, he would spend some time with them. Could you imagine uh, in the day and age we live in, there'd be a knock at the door and, and you open the door and, and, and the Lord has come for a visit? Well, well, that was sort of what they were enjoying in the garden. Uh, not that they had doors or doorbells or anything like that, but 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 the Lord just showed up on a regular basis, and so they they have this this opportunity just to uh, to to commune with uh, the the Creator of all things, and and what a glorious thing that must have been uh, for God to come and just just manifest Himself in their presence and just just sort of hanging out with the Lord. Can can you imagine what that must have been like? And yet. Uh, 
through through Jesus Christ and and uh, and His redemption, His restoration uh, of us uh, with the Lord. We we have the opportunity where we can. And, and, and I don't use this sacrilegiously. We, we can just hang out with God anytime we want. He, he tells us we can come boldly before the throne, that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. That, that's a promise he's made unto us. He, uh, he tells us, call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There, uh, there are all sorts of promises God makes. Uh, uh, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And so, so he tells us to, uh, to come unto him, and, and God still has that desire, uh, that want to, to commune with us. And, and he's the one who went to great lengths. Uh, he certainly was the one who showed up in the garden, but when that fellowship was severed, when that communion was broken, uh, he went to great lengths to send his son uh, to come and, and die on the cross to, to restore what had been broken. Uh, he paid the penalty that we owed in order that he might right that relationship. Uh, in order that we might have communion with him again, that relationship that was broken uh, in the Garden of Eden through the sins of Adam and Eve and that sin passing on to all mankind, uh, it was restored uh, through Jesus Christ. That, that, that last Adam restored what, what the first Adam had broken. And so, so you have this, this, this glorious uh, uh, restoration that takes place and God going to great lengths to restore it. And, and, and you know, one of the sad realities is even though God has has restored that communion, uh, it's a sad reality that a lot of folks don't take advantage of that restoration that God has given. Uh, but, but then you find that, uh, that our failures can jeopardize our access to him. Uh, even, even though uh, God wants for us to enjoy communion and fellowship with him, uh, there's an accountability, a responsibility on our end. And we, uh, we can certainly... Uh, uh, we can certainly destroy or, or, or ruin or, or, or sever uh, that relationship between us and the Lord. Uh, you find that because of their sin, because they ate of the, uh, the tree of, uh, of knowledge of good and evil, uh, by the way, he tells, uh, he tells the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he says, listen, we, we better get him out of the garden before he eats of the tree of life and lives forever. Uh, you would think that he'd had enough sense to eat of the tree of life first before he did the other. But uh, at any rate, um, he expels Adam and Eve from the garden. Uh, no, no longer does God come down and visit them in the garden. They don't have access unto the Lord anymore. And so, uh, so that, that sin is pretty serious business. It, it separates uh, from the Lord. And so, so it was their failure that jeopardized their access. It wasn't God uh, who jeopardized it. It wasn't, it wasn't God who caused it. They caused it. And, and the same thing is true about us. He, he, he stopped visiting with, with, with them. And quite honestly, um, when we sin, when we transgress, when we break the commands of God, we, uh, we jeopardize uh, our access unto the Lord. We, uh, we need to confess our sins because then he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He, he restores that relationship. And so, so sin is the great divider. Uh, sin is what separates between us and God. But quite honestly, if you look at every earthly relationship, it's when we transgress, when we do others wrong, uh, then, then we sever those relationships. There's a consequence uh, to doing wrong. And doing wrong, it, it severs relationships on every level. Uh, uh, it shouldn't be surprising unto us the consequence of what that does. And, and since it's certainly true in our earthly relationships, how much more so in our heavenly relationship. Uh, but when we, uh, when we keep a clean slate and when we pursue him, uh, we can have sweet fellowship and sweet communion with God. It was all his idea. He's the one who went to great lengths that he might spend time with you and that you might spend time with him. And what a glorious thought that is. Father, we thank you for the day and just the way you love us and care for us. And, and uh, Lord, I pray that today you just help us to be conscious of your presence. Uh, Lord, help us to follow you faithfully. Lord, help us to love you and serve you the way that you deserve to be loved and served. And, and Lord, I pray our lives would count for you. Thank you for what you did for us. Uh, Lord, thank you for loving us enough to die for us, to resurrect for us, to offer life unto us. And uh, thank you for the grace that you've given, Lord, that brings salvation, uh, that we could even cry out unto you. And uh, God, thank you for the fullness of life that you bring. And, and uh, Lord, not just what we have in this life, but what we look forward to, uh, in the days to come. Thank you, Lord, that uh, one day we'll stand in your presence face to face 
And, uh, and Lord, we can have perfect communion uh, for all of eternity. Lord, we look forward to that. Lord, you tell us in your word, we, we look through a glass darkly now. Uh, but one day, one day is going to be face to face and how we hunger and long for that day. Uh, Lord, just uh, use us th this day and uh, God help us to stay in constant contact with you. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. I hope you have a, a great day today. We're, we're gone for just a few days and, and I just wanted to share that thought with you. And I hope it's a blessing to you. We love y'all and I look forward to seeing you this, this Sunday. God bless you.